I've got better retro unboxing. I have ordered a box of games. Let's take the uh, documents off there first. This comes from 21st Century Dirt Merchant CEX. Now CEX have had an interesting run with me. I've had some really good ones. I've got a good Dreamcast, I've got some good games from them. There are some terrible ones where they sent me some Platinum games when it said it wasn't the Platinum Edition, it was the Black Box Edition for the PlayStation 1. And also they sent me a PS1 without the drive spindle. Yeah, we test every single bloody console my ass. There is no way they tested that because nothing would have run on it because it couldn't put discs in it. But hey, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and we're going to try and do an unboxing of some Dreamcast games they've sent me for my new Dreamcast. So, in here should be two games. I shall leave that as a surprise which ones they are, but uh, if you've seen the thumbnail you know what ones they are anyway. But hey, so let's get this box split open and see what the quality is like. Yeah, let's tear this thing open. There we go. And let's see, and if you watch any other mother videos, you know that I completely dislike bubble wrap and it's lovely that they've started using this stuff. Nice, fully recyclable goodies. So yeah, we've got two games in there. And we have got one of the cheapest games they sell, but still one of my favourites. Trick Style. It's like Tony Hawk's meets Blade Runner meets Metropolis Street Racer. I really, really enjoy it. And of course, you've got the all-time classic, Crazy Taxi. Oh, I do love Crazy Taxi. And I bought this one because, let's face it, we play Crazy Taxi on any other system. They've cut all the music out because the royalties run out and they didn't want to pay for the Offspring soundtrack. Whereas this one, it's got the lovely soundtrack on it. So, let's split this open and see what we've got inside. I don't know the way they wrap these, they kind of like shrimp wrap them. And sort of put it round and it grips onto them, but uh, let's get rid of that down there. Okay, this is one of my favourite games of all time. Crazy Taxi. And yeah, the, uh, the box here is actually turned out really, really nicely. It's, it's uh, not too scratched, there's not much dirt on it. Let's have a look, see if the, yeah, the hinge is good. Ah, yeah, the uh, the spindle there is broken, so you can't have a disc on the front, but there we go. You can have the disc in the back. Let's see. Oh, wow, that is in there. Carefully. There we go, I'm going to break the spindle. Uh, moderate scratches, but nothing that I mean it won't play. And, ah, uh, look. Permanent pen. Why do they always put permanent pen on games? Never understand. And they've even put permanent pen on the manual. But we can get that off in a minute. And in juxtaposition to the other manual, this one, the this is almost as thin as newspaper. You can actually see look, you can actually see through it. It's so thin. And yeah, it's got all your usual languages and it's got uh, all your manoeuvres, all the characters. Oh god, I didn't know they actually have they have names. You've got Buzz and Pierre and Biff and Dan. So I had no idea that these characters actually had names in this game. And here we go, we have got what looks like a, an ink stain that goes through. Now, oh, well, can't winch. Uh, I've got the, uh, the protagonists. We've got Gus, my absolute favorite, BD Joe, Gina, and Axel. And yeah, they've got all kinds of information about their backstory, but I don't give a damn. It's not about backstory, it's about picking up fares and driving crazy. I love this game. Right. Let's give it a quick go. First things first. Let's get the cover out of here. Yes. Uh, 
Nice good condition. And the back cover out. God, I love this game. It's just bright colours. It's just so simple compared to sort of other games where you have so much going on and, and so many objectives. This is very, very simple. You jump in the taxi, you pick people up. When you run out of time, the game stops. I miss simple games like that. Right, first of all, a plastic spray. Get all the grime off here. Ugh, it's a sticky label and fingerprints from 20 years worth of use. Although games for the Dreamcast never have as much use as other games. You get PlayStation games which have been used for, 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 for years and years and years and years and all scratched. Lots of Dreamcast games were sort of bought and then put away and then sort of never used because the Dreamcast wasn't that commercially successful. Surprise, surprise. And uh, as such, the games never saw as much wear and tear as, say, a, a Tomb Raider or a, a Gran Turismo. Okay, a bit of isopropyl on the offending permanent marker. There we go, all gone. And now on the disc itself. It's hard to see what is uh, <laughs> what is logo and what is uh, permanent pen, but ah, there we go. Yeah, it's coming off now. Lovely. Front cover back in there. Back cover back in there. And a nice clean game disc. Perfect. That looks a lot nicer and a lot shinier. All the fingerprints and the permanent marker removed. Right, okay. Only one thing to do now. Let's make some crazy money. Are you ready? Hey, hey, come on over. Have some fun with Crazy Taxi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now this one I do have to turn the volume down on because I will get copyright strike if I let it play. So we're going to have to play this sans audio. I'm playing this game first in the arcade and the best thing about the arcade machine was it had a... Uh, Base tube in the bottom on display, so you basically played it with a um, a foot pedal, a steering wheel, and a big base tube right next to your knees that basically just kept blaring across the arcade. You, if you, if this game was in an arcade, you knew about it. So okay, let's go pick up some fares. Now I know in the earlier we checked on the uh, manual and it said these guys have names, but I didn't memorise them, so I've got no idea who I just picked up. I reckon it was Rachel, but I have no clue. Oh, just the speed of this game was absolutely fantastic from the time. Uh, and break, and oh, medium, normal, come on, we need speedies. There's an orange one, let's pick up an orange one. Break, get in. Cable car. That's just straight down the bottom here. Stick to the middle and avoid the trams. God, I love this game so much. Yeah! Straight down the middle. Oh, no, not a chance. Break, and yes, speedy. So yeah, these games run really, really nicely. Okay, CX, all is forgiven. Your games are a lot better than your retro console condition. But then again, you can't really have a problem with a game. You just basically see the scratch and it doesn't play. Oh, it's not scratching, it does. Where do you want to go? <gasps> Pizza Hut. I also love the way that it's got all these licensed stuff in there. And you play the game now on like mobile phone or whatever, and they've taken everything out of it. There's no licensing, no licensed music. And it's just sort of like, it's like playing half the game. 
Half of it is just the fun of jumping between Tower Records, Pizza Hut and the original Levi's store while listening to licensed music from Smash. I don't know, maybe, was it Smash? I don't know, it was, it was Offspring, but I don't know which album it was from. Yay, and drop you off for a normal rating. God, I need to practice this more. So yeah, thank you very much for watching Retro Gaming Unboxing. Next week I've ordered a interesting thing. It's a copy of Half-Life, it's boxed. Half-Life never actually came out for the Dreamcast. It got made, but then got cancelled because of licensing issues and the fact the Dreamcast was dead in its ass by the time that uh, they finished the game. But yeah, people still do sort of mock boxes for them, mock cases. So I bought one of those, I'm going to see what that turns out like. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay happy and stay safe. Thanks for watching.